15 minute thing because uh, hardly anyone came to S7, the auditorium. So, uh, what is it about Mohammed and the mountain? Is it yeah, Mohammed and the mountain. Yeah. Come, yeah. come to the mountain yeah. instead. So, Steve is a um, uh, uh, professor in economics, uh, and but, but he's going to talk about the simulation program that he's developing uh, uh, with the help of a programming professor down in Sydney, uh, which resembles similarly but in many ways it's more convenient and uh, in many ways it is uh, cheaper in the sense that it's, <laughs> it's, lot free. Cheaper. it's, it's free, <laughs> so every, anyone can use it. So okay. <coughs> well, thank you. Um, I know I'm talking to people who are professionals in this area. I'm just an amateur in the sense of doing system dynamics, but I'm trying to bring it into economics in general. But to, to bring it across, of course, I had to emulate the features that exist in a standard system dynamics program. And uh, if you look at that, you'll see a thing which is a very baby version of what you're used to in Simulink. So, you know, the, that's the entire tool set we have right now, uh, the usual objects. And at the moment, we don't have context-sensitive clicking. So if you want to wire one component to another, you've got to go from move mode to wire mode. Pardon me, if you want to make a group, you've got to choose lasso, etc., etc. So it's still very early. You can download it from there. It comes there. We've got it. We put a, a Windows and a Mac and a, a Windows and Mac build and Linux source code with every iteration. And um, it's had about 2,000 hours of programming so far. Now, the, the guys programming is a brilliant C programmers. They've done a lot for 2,000 hours. But compare that to how many, what, what do you reckon has gone into Simulink? Two million? Mm -hmm. More. Where they charge for it. Okay. Now, some, some novel things we've done about it. I've, I've, I've used a range of programs. I've used Simulink, I've used ZivizSim, VenSim, which I find dreadful, uh, I think, and a few others. So I've, I've got ideas about what's good and bad. And I've also used a lot of mathematical modeling software, things like Mathematica, MathCAD, and so on. So I'm picking up ideas from each of these. So one thing we do, for example, is rather than just using wires to pass values, we also use names. Like this is the Lorenz model, the best I could find in Simulink. I don't have Simulink installed on my machine right now. I can't afford MATLAB's fees. But that's, a, that's one I found of somebody's graph. And you'd all be used to that. And what you can see here, X, Y, and Z are labeled workspaces, which interact with the MATLAB engine. But this Z dashed and Z here and X dashed, of course, are just their text embellishments. There were no actual function in the program. And if you want to pass the value from the differential of Z to Z to the workspace, then you've got to use wires. Uh, this is the same model in Minsky, <coughs> and what we're doing is we're passing by wires in each equation, but then the value for y, which is here, is passed by variable up there. So you can actually lay it out as you'd lay out a differential equation. And this is the, um, you can use wires as well if you want to emphasize the feedback, but if you get a very, very complicated diagram, then often, you know, the wiring can actually get in the way of interpreting what the hell's going on. So. The idea of passing by value makes it easier to do that. And it's integrated directly into the program. And I'll, I'll show you that when I demonstrate it. We also produce and use LaTeX inside the program. So you can have subscripts in Greek letters, no problem at all. Okay, And you just type the measure type of LaTeX. So backslash and then lambda will give you the letter lambda. Underscore will give you a lowercase. Curly bracketing will give you text, whole text string rather than just one character, and so on. So slash beta underscore curly brackets min close curly brackets will give you beta min actually on the on the palette. And that's a variable. It's not just a, a label. Um, we embed the graphics in the program. Now, it still throws me that Simulink forces you. Did anybody know better than this? The last time I used Simulink, you had to double click on a scope when a model was running to actually see it. Well, forget it. You can, you can whack the straight into the diagram, and you can simulate as you go. And I'll just... Uh, Oh, pardon me, I'll bring that up as a, that was just, I thought it was a movie there, but it looks like it's not. Here's, here's like a simple harmonic oscillator. And I've done, done one using F1 and the other using phi1, et cetera, et cetera. And you simulate and you see it in the diagram. And if you want to have a second diagram where you uh, might cop, uh, copy the, the variables and attach them to get an XY plot, then we've set that you can have up to, up to four, whoops, pardon me, wrong spot. That's the, the range for the axis there. Okay, so I've got that correct. I may have put an extra wire in by accident. Let's see. 
That's okay. Okay. So just embed and put as many graphs as you like inside the whole system. Uh, and that's a more complicated one. That, that's the Lorenz attractor. You can also run the program um, and change system parameters while it's running. This is, oh, pardon me, but that's my banker. The main reason I've designed this is to bring banking into economic modelling. So that was actually pretty clicking on a bank icon there. But if I run this simulation, and uh, one thing, in neoclassical, uh, conventional economists just don't know that the world exists in anything other than equilibrium. With this total mindset, which just throws me crazy. So what I do with this particular model, well, there we are, we're in equilibrium. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. That's the Lorenz model in equilibrium. But I can give it a momentary shock, and then we get to the non-equilibrium dynamic, which is rather more fascinating. So you can do that with any, any parameters that you like. If you, if you reset an initial value, then the simulation will begin again. Well, actually, it will begin again, yeah. But you can also change a parameter live and see what can happen to it as you change it. You can move from one one regime to another in a chaotic model quite easily by changing your parameter values while you run the simulation. And the uh, latest trick we've added, and I'll just bring it up, I'll show it on, a, I'll bring a blank one here. We're still um, perfecting this, but I find it a pain to be always going up and saying I want a, like a variable here called GDP and I want to bring a, a constant down called, say, labour underscore productivity, and giving a value for it. You know, it's certainly nice to be able to design visually, but it takes a long time. I, f I find with some programs you can do like things like, say, I want to divide key by there, and I want another variable here called labour, and then divide that by population here and another divide by key there, and whack in a variable called lambda there. Okay? So, yeah, we're going to add to that over time. We're going to make it visible. You actually see what you're typing before it turns up on screen at the moment. It just got to finish typing, then you see it there. But that makes design a lot faster. Okay. So that's uh, another little feature we've added. <coughs> and uh, I'll show you the varying of parameters there. This is, this, this is a, uh, bring up the harmonic oscillator with a bit more detail to it. And if you simulate this, and you then vary your parameters as it runs, what we've got with the slider there, by the way, is you have gone above the slider mark, I can use the arrow keys to change the variable. I don't need, again, I don't need to click in that little shaft there. You know how hard it is when you're working on a, on a giving a presentation in front of students, you can't quite find the right position for the mouse, Well, you don't need to worry about it. Just get it in the rough region, leave the mouse alone, and then you can vary what the students are seeing as, as you run the simulation. And you can change the simulation speed dynamically as well. Speed it up, slow it down, etc, etc. And we also directly output to LaTeX and MATLAB. So one where we check, we've only got a single fourth order runge cutter simulation routine inside there right now. We want to add Burstler and a whole range of others as time goes on to you know, STIP systems and so on. We, we have to, first of all, get it working. So we just use the one, one so far. But what we've done right from the output is, is in integrate with LaTeX. So that model, if I bring this model up here and then choose uh, output LaTeX. Let's just do that here. And having done that, if I go to that location, and bring it up. Then there's my latex code for the model, and that's that's showing the actual uh, DVI interpreted code. You've got your uh, let's see the actual yeah your latex source code is there as well. So you can put that into a, a document for documenting what your uh, model is about and so on. And we, of course, outputting to MATLAB we, means we can check the accuracy of simulations. And if, if you want to design something here and then with a larger model, then play with the MATLAB toolbox for the working with it, then you can do that. And you can bypass simulating completely. And various little tricks we're using for design. You might notice, as well as these eight markers on the bottom here and four on either side, which are interlinked with each other, we also have top 
and bottom of ranges. So you can put range variables inside there and set a range that a graph will go to. So you can have a sliding window where you can expand or contract the range of a graph and things like that. So uh, I've shown that one reasonably well. And to save clutter, we have, have a math operation like uh, subtracting D times E times F from uh, A plus B plus C, where you don't need to add extra input ports. It's something which effectively supports multiple operation. We have multiple wires going in at that point. Again, to save having to get a very cluttered diagram, you have to add adding and subtracting ports. Grouping is in there, but we're still fine tuning. It's still got a few rough edges and crashes occasionally. And one thing we're adding right now is the capacity to record a model for later replay. So you can design a model and record your designing of the model and then replay that model at a later stage. That works both for instruction, but of course if you set an assignment and students then have to give a particular model you want them to design, there's no possibility for two students to accidentally give you exactly the same time coordinates and space coordinates when they build the model. So you know, you know whatever's submitted is unique per student, which could be very useful in teaching purposes. Um, so further thing we need to do, make, make mode selection context sensitive rather than having to choose the mode. And um, we're getting there. So we're happy to add other features that make it more useful for mathematicians and engineers. Which I'd be delighted to have you guys become users and beta testers and interact with us over time. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a group within a group within a group, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. But uh, that's that's the grouping is still like if I try to group at the moment, it still has plenty of bugs to it. So for example, I can group if I choose a lasso, then that automatically groups what I've lassoed. But as you notice, it didn't grab the graph. Okay, so we don't. What, what we intend doing with the um, at a later point is when you group and you have a graph in the group, then the group the graph will actually become the group icon. So you, when you simulate, then what you see is the actual graph. And we're adding in user controlled functions as well, that where you define them in LaTeX. So if you want A divided by B minus C times lambda squared minus D, then you type the LaTeX code and you get the actual block with the input for the equation. But yeah, that's, as you can see, we've got a long way to go with grouping. But what you add down there to the left is a sort of generic symbol of a group. Yeah. You can then zoom inside and see what it looks like because it's wiring all over the place there the way I've defined that one. And if I wanted to group inside there, and this will probably fall over, let's see. Okay, and zoom to space. So I've got another, again, it's not displayed well, but that's another grouped. Um, that's a group within a group there. But I'm causing a bug, obviously. So we, we have plenty of work to go there, and some beta testing would be really appreciated. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm hearing about it. Yeah? Open. open. Model. Yes, I did. Um, <coughs> I found that, that the XCOS is the one that I've used there. I, I really didn't like the XCOS uh, design system. I found it um, very hard to work out what to do, even as somebody who's used to dynamic modeling. So the I just didn't like, particularly like it. So. Um, and it, like it, it replicated some of the drawbacks of Simulink. I thought the absence of graphs being embedded in the diagram, and they fixed that up. But now, now you can, of course. But uh, when I looked at it, you couldn't. And I thought, oh, I'd rather design something from the ground up that was less cluttered. Yeah. Pardon? It's not an online tool. There is a compiler that has assembled Yeah. Yeah. We're adding. We've we've got an online version coming as well. We actually have a, a group of students who made that a, a final year project, and they pretty much completed the interface. We didn't actually link with our Runge Cutter engine, so we'll have an uh, online version. No need to install. And we intend having. We've now it looks like we're going to get pretty substantial funding from the government of Ecuador, of all places. Uh, for an open source project, which means we'll add a tablet version and uh, and uh, and uh, HTML5 and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I 
Uh, well, that, that upward to MATLAB is, is sort of one step in that direction. So, yeah, again, it's a case of what we have time to implement with just one programmer. But like for the moment, we have, out, we have output latex, output to MATLAB, log and log the simulation, and then coming but not working yet, recording the simulation, replaying it. So we just need to, at one stage, there'll be output and it'll be MATLAB, Octave, whatever format you have. I make a lot of use of MathCAD as it happens. And I'd like to be able to output this directly into MathCAD, so we'll add that at some stage as well. And Mathematica. Yeah. We output the. Uh, let's just act, uh, I actually won't output that because I've stuffed up that model. Let's load another one. Uh, a double pendulum here. I can't load it because I don't have MATLAB running. But I can send it to you, you can check it out if you like. And then that, um, there's an M file. Let's see if I can actually take a look inside and show you the text. Ah, <laughs> God knows what I was going to default open that with. Let's find out the hard way. Actually, I'll, I'll make it a text file. Pretty basic, but that does make make sense to you. Yeah. Okay. It's also like I mean, it could be interesting to make it the other way. Like we have functions for the program. Yeah. Call them from the simulation. Yeah. No, we uh, that is an, again an intention. It's just a case of one guy. What we're trying to program so far. So now that we've got this, the uh, capacity to output to MATLAB, then it's fairly easy to say let's input from MATLAB define a function, import the function inside, and so on. So the, 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 uh, the, the hooks are there to do all that, and just a case of getting the programming time to write those, write those code in. Um, we have a SourceForge page, of course, for the project. And let's see our current list of tickets. We're naming them after famous ancient economists. But that's the current list of ones we're opening on writing out, adding like adding random up. Hang on a second. Back to Mun. Okay. Adding random operations, putting in a user defined function, um, <coughs> etc. etc. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So please download, have a play, mm -hmm. see what you think. What is Minsky about? Yeah, I mean the, the word. The name. Yeah. The name. Uh, relates to a, a rebel economist called Hyman Minsky. Okay. And he was the guy whose uh, theory of financial instability was completely at odds with the neoclassical equilibrium, finance is wonderful, deregulate everything attitude that dominated economics for the last 40 years. I think probably his main developers since he died of his ideas. So as a way of tribute to him, I, that's why I named it Minsky. And what it adds, which is not the same thing you see in standard, oh, those are, by the way, I've embedded these models in my presentation, so I can give it to Tron to pass it around. You can download them and take a look at that lot straight away. <coughs> but um, what all these programs, you can use these in economics, but the hassle of trying to design models of the financial system, and that is that if, I, if I'd like to do a very simple model of, of, of finance and say you a person lending money to another person and then repaying it, paying wages out of it and so on, that's what it looks like. <coughs> and that's exactly the same model done using what I call the the, mince, the, the godly table inside the software, which is this thing. Yeah, I'll bring it down. Bring that table. Yeah. So you can embed a table like that inside the program, and then the program lets you define assets and liabilities, the way an accountant would think. And you then generate equations. So this is, this is the rate of change of loans is lending minus repayment. And the rate of change of the firm's bank account is new lending uh, minus wages, minus interest payments, plus consumption from workers, plus consumption from bankers, minus repayment of debt. That puts all those equations together for you. 
And um, in a flowchart, if I made a merit mistake, like for example, I've got one missing wire there, model will still run. There's no checking to say you should you need a you need a wire there. But if I put that in the table system and I leave it out, it flagged me that row sum should be zero. So I, if you've got to put every flow has to go in two system states, and the signs have to be matching every time. To, that's why we needed a new program to do it rather than being able to do this sort of stuff in VizSim or or even worse, uh, something like um, like Vensim. Hmm. Hence Minsky. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> mm.